are in Bill Melendez's studio, his actual office in his studio. And uh, there's all sorts of really cool uh, ephemera and little doodads from his life and, and, and career in animation. And I'm also here with two pretty important figures in the life and times of Bill Melendez and the studio. So this is Sandy Tomey, and this is Larry Lechleiter. Oh, yay. I could have done it a little bit better. But then, And I'm Leslie with Art Insights and Cinema Siren. And we're here to talk a little bit about your career and the part you played in the history of Bill Melendez Studios, but in particular in Peanuts cartoons, because there are so many fans out there that just love the specials and are, have such an important uh, they have such an important part in their lives. I'm one of them. I love them so much, as she knows. And so, uh, I just, can you talk a little bit about how did you start out uh, working with Bill? How did that happen? Oh, it was a lucky fluke. But uh, I just wanted to comment on what you were saying uh, about the popularity of the show and, and uh, how many fans there are. It, I think every one of the people that worked on the show actually grew up with those little Peanuts books, and, and we were all fans, so, and, uh, and that was, I think, first and foremost in our, in our heads as we worked on the show. Um, but how I got the job, it was just uh, a lucky break, as in, as it often is with uh, this industry. You're working, and the job you're working on is petering out, and wondering what you're going to do for your next job. And somebody comes into the studio and says, hey, Joe Smo down the road is, you know, looking for uh, animators or board artists or whatnot. And so you, you know, pack up your portfolio and you hoof it over there and say, what are you looking for? And they say, well, what can you do? Stuff like that. Now, in a small animation studio such as this one, smaller-ish, uh, did everyone do a little bit of everything, or was it a pretty strong delineation between tasks and jobs? Hmm. Uh, yeah, the smaller the studio, the more hats you had to put on. And in fact, uh, there was one gal, Carol Barnes, who uh, literally had uh, at least a dozen hats that she'd wear to work. Um, and I don't know if it was symbolic or a fashion thing, but she just liked hats. Make cracks about it all the time, but yeah, uh, you know, you, you had to do a certain amount of this and that. But there was, there was everybody had a particular job. There was a board artist uh, or a few, and uh, layout artists. Mostly, I think the the layout guys would also do the boarding, uh, along with Bill. Did a lot of the boarding and Phil and, and Sam. So uh, you know, everybody contributed something more than whatever their job can. And I think what's exciting about a small studio too is the fact that the people who are the heads of the studio have so much more a hand in the work that you really feel, did you did you feel, um, you know, more understood and appreciated it feels like when you've got somebody who's like really looking at your work and giving thumbs up or thumbs down or giving you input, that can be really a nice thing compared to some of the bigger studios. Yeah, I, I think uh, one of my first uh, personal encounters with Bill on the job uh, was when he gave me a particular job to do, and he you know, handed it off to me himself. And uh, I had an idea for some little nuance or some change or something, and you know, I was very intimidated uh, by the boss of the studio and going and the stash. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, but you know, I I drew out what I wanted to uh, propose to him, and uh, you know, again, sort of stumbled and mumbled, and then he said, "Well, let me see." You know, and he took the drawings that I had, was had ready to show him, and he looked through them, you know, and then then we talked about it because. What I learned was that 
I could try to describe something to him, and he wouldn't be interested. But if I showed him a drawing or a sequence of drawings, then we were communicating. So that was and the language. That was the language, was the and, language. And, uh, and it also meant that he was approachable, or you know, that, it, that at least I had found some common way of communicating. Do you remember what particularly it was you were working on? So, uh, when did you, which particular special did you start with? I think the first thing I worked on was the, the original Valentine show. Oh, I love that one so much. Um, and, uh, How do I love thee? Let me count the ways. Yeah, <laughs> and, and like I said, I had wandered in, and I guess you know, they, were, they were working on that show, and they introduced me to Al Pavian, who was uh, kind of uh, heading up the assistant animation department. And he gave me a scene in that show to work on. And that led to another scene. You know, and I'd take a moment. How home short was and, the scene? Oh, I don't know. One of them was pretty long. Um, most of the time they were, you know, maybe three feet, a couple of seconds. And are you doing, you're doing um, just. Uh, sort of lead animation in that one little section? Or? No, no, not at all. No, it was, uh, it, it had already been animated and I was just doing the assistant animation. Oh, so okay. I was, you know, cleaning up the key drawings and um, doing the breakdown. Right, okay. Yeah. Well, that's a pretty good way to start, though, because it mm -hmm. wasn't, you were just doing in betweening from the get. Right. You got, you went a couple of steps above that right from the beginning. Yeah, well. <laughs> and how quickly did you move up from there? Oh, not quickly at all. <laughs> no, this is this is not a. I mean, there there are other people who are much more gifted at this than I am. Yeah. It was hard work, a lot of angst, and, uh, chewing on my nails at home. What does it? The angst come from? Uh, what part of it? Not thinking I'm good enough. Really. Yeah. But you're still here. You're still doing it. So yeah. clearly, somebody <laughs> somewhere is completely uh, yeah it, has faith in what you're doing. It uh, it still surprises me, not as much as it used to. Don't but, you think that hard work is almost as important, if not more so, well, especially as an animator? I, I always did believe that. Um, you know, would be challenged at times, but you now I still do. Um, and and. There was a time kind of late, uh, when, but we were still on Larchmont, and I took a freelance job that somebody had offered working at night. So I would go from Bill's studio to this other studio to work on this project there. And, uh, and some, somebody said, you know, we'd been working at it for a week or so, and somebody said, boy, Larry, you're really fast. And I thought, what? <laughs> because, you know, uh, at, at Melinda's, I was always the kid, you know? So I was the youngest one there for, for the longest time. But, you know, the minute I left and went somewhere else, I, I had some, some, uh, some you know, experience behind me. And, yeah, well, you know, I've been doing it for a few years, so. Do you remember... Uh, just as an example, the Valentine special, do you remember the uh, solving a problem? I mean, were you ever in a position where you had to try to figure out? You're asking me to remember something that's a long time ago. Um, yeah, I, I remember the scenes, and I remember that they were difficult in various ways. Um, it's hard to remember specific issues. Uh -huh. The, the characters in uh, Peanuts cartoons, what specifically when you, because there are different kinds of animation have different, automatically have different mm -hmm. kinds of issues that you oh, have sure. to, like problems to solve. Yeah. So in terms of those particular characters, is it the way they walk, the way they interact? What is it that generally is the challenge in the animation? Well, prob probably the biggest challenge, and I, I think most of the people that work on the shows would agree with me, is turning them from profile on because the the two poses uh, are slightly different anatomically. You know, the eyes in relation to the nose, in relation to the mouth, 
are different in a profile than they are in a front view. And then there's the shape of the head. The shape of the head's different in the profile than in the front view. So to, to do a head turn. Um, well, what I remember was from earlier, one of the first lessons that I learned even as an in-betweener was not to turn the head straight, but to do a slight, a slight dip um, or some kind of an arc uh, with the, the head and the nose. So that, and, and the advantage to doing that in this case was that by, by not moving things in a straight line, you wouldn't actually see things shift alignment because you, you can kind of you know, change that curve and things would shift during the curve and you wouldn't notice it. So. That's cool. But that's, yeah, that, that was probably the, the most obvious uh, difficulty there. Bill came up with the, the three drawing walk cycle, or it's actually six drawings for a cycle, but three drawings per step. And, uh, and I think he, the main reason he came up with that in my mind, I never really asked him about it, was because they had sh such short legs. And, and it, uh, but since there are only three drawings, there's not a lot you can there's not a lot of movement that you can do because it's so fast. I mean, they're just bouncing along like that. So you're not swinging the arms or anything like that. So, so that was another kind of thing as to how to get that walk to look good. I love that there's not as much squash and stretch in the Peanuts cartoons because, you know, it's in a weird way, it feels like, I mean, I, I love squash and stretch in, in Disney mm -hmm. cartoons, but for me when, with Peanuts, when there's, it's almost like it sounds ridiculous, but it's almost like there's more reality to them by giving them a little bit more of a consistent mm. movement in the way that they move. I mean, how, what did you think about the fact that they had a more, I mean, yes, there were three steps and they did that that way, but they were also, um, it was a very simple way of moving and interacting, mm. but there, it kind of left room for a lot more. Uh, I don't know, authentic kind of real interaction, which sounds like you talk about cartoons, but that's what I said. Yeah, like. well, a, a lot of the look of the show, both in the animation and also in the, I think the design um, and the color and everything, uh, was influenced, I think, strongly by where these guys came from. And, and they came from uh, Warner Brothers and UPA They, they looked upon the design of, of a cartoon as kind of dictating how it should be animated. So I think that Bill and uh, Frank Smith and, and the guys that kind of started the, the shows, uh, they, they were looking at the simple style of Schultz's drawings and, uh, and, and they you know, they didn't want to make a Warner Brothers cartoon out of it. Mm -hmm. they, they wanted to get to have its own um, look and style and, you know, find a way of animating that was harmonious with that design so that it would be true to Schultz's original concept. And there's a vibe, a sort of mellow vibe to the whole thing. You think about Vince Guaraldi's music and all of that is so, you know, it's kind of just a vibe of mellowness. I always thought that the walk, you know, when Bill would talk about the walk, you know how little kids roll off their toes? Mm -hmm. That, it kind of really went with the jazz. I mean, the beat of his walk and the music that they used in the very first shows really went too well together. And, you know, it kind of solved two problems. Yeah. You know, it gave them a little bit of character and, uh, you know, short-legged people. Well, you know, I think that Vince Guaraldi probably uh, composed the music to what he was seeing. So, so, so I, I don't think it was particularly animated to his music, but I wasn't there at the time, so I couldn't tell you. Well, do you want to say record the music first? No. No, they didn't. Okay. Yeah, you, with scoring, you always, uh, you're watching the, the movie, yeah. and then you write it on the music. Mm -hmm. so. Um, hung that way for sure, but I think it's the the fact that there's 
this. I mean, you know, I wonder, because I love that music too, I wonder which, like, do I love the music because I love the, the cartoons? I think so, but the music itself is amazing too, mm -hmm. so, but it's, they're both so great. It's a, yeah, it's a There's such point. a, exactly, exactly.